right there have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime. And you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time. So just minutes from now, and you may hear the core begin to hail out um, or call Dragon uh, for communications and see if we can potentially get communications with them a little bit earlier. Following this, we'll have two events in rapid succession. We'll have the Drogue parachutes deploy at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, followed by the mains just one minute later at 2.54 p.m. Pacific time, ahead of a splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Three minutes pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, contract. All right, we're gonna start hearing uh, the SpaceX Crew Operations Resource, Resource Engineer. SpaceX, freedom is with you. 4.16, get you in the right. Copy that, freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer, expect automated shoot deployment. Heat shield and the work that it does those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to about 119 miles per hour. We can see 15 kilometers, brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. Once again, the capsule is going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those drogue parachutes that we manufacture here in-house are uh, going to slow the, the, the spacecraft down to 119 miles per hour. And that is when we will see the main parachutes deploy. And that occurs about 6,000 feet above the ocean's surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom as it returns back to Earth. We are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate down low. out here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy names. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Thanks, Freedom. Yeah. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. 
Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining sure. us, you're looking at 800 meters, a live view of Crew 9, just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there, just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Copy. was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel. Uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the old splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for Splashdown, located in the Gulf of America, um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And Splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Down. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing water ride. I see a capsule full of grams ear to ear. see on your screen we have visual confirmation of splashdown dragon freedom has returned home and nasa astronauts system safety verifications are in progress we'll report back when recovery personnel are in route that like bucket area is that is uh, underneath the the side hatch that is where the main parachutes were stored so when we saw the dragon capsule docked at station it looked very different um, that the, the the panel that protects and covers the main parachutes, that was uh, still intact, as well as the panels that enclose where the drogue parachutes are located. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. Freedom, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in the next few minutes. We can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule. These fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we, um, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. 
uh, hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on-orbit burns to con to maneuver the the spacecraft. Unfortunately, those hypergolics are um, are are unable to be breathed. They they are toxic, and so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft.